Here is what's left of my chipper shredder. As of the date of this video, I purchased this two years ago. It was from Harbor Freight, and since Home Depot carried the same model, I thought it was a safe purchase. Two years later, I discovered this was in error. For history, I had two large trees that I needed to make go away, so I bought this shredder, and it turned out to make this job very easy. About one month after I started, and estimating no more than two hours runtime, it started making a noise, and I found that the end of the crankshaft where it comes out of the engine was cracked. Warranty replacement from Harbor Freight was a breeze, and I give them five stars for that. Now, two years later, and out of warranty, with no more than 10 hours total runtime, the crankshaft broke off. Deep dive into reviews find that this is a very common complaint. I decided it would be a waste of money to replace the engine with the same model, so I started thinking of other solutions. I have access to a Kohler 19 horsepower engine, and that would make this serious overkill, and then I thought about converting it to electric using a lithium ion battery. I am an engineer at an industrial vehicle electrical manufacturing company giving me access to components. Here is the stripped down shredder showing the chipper housing, the shredder housing, and the rotor that still has the broken output shaft inside of it. Over to the left are the wheels. Now let's get into the design. I created models of the two housings, mounting plate and rotor in Inventor, and then assembled them together. A quick review on how the chipper shredder works. First, looking into the front shredder housing, we can see the shredder rotor that has two different sets of sharpened pivoting blades that tear up the leaves and small branches. Now going deeper into the housing, on the chipper plate there are two cutters to chip the larger branches as they are shoved down the chute. Almost all of the chipper shredders in this class claim to go up to 3 inch branches. Just FYI, they all lie. This one would stall out with branches right around 2 inches. Now rotating around to the power side and we can see my design for the electric transmission conversion. On the front, there is a 1 and 3 quarter inch flange bearing, but the rotor shaft is only 44 millimeters. I was unable to find a 44 millimeter bearing, so I will have to shim that up with a 17 thousandths thick shim. The engine shaft was 3 quarter inch diameter, so I have a 14 inch keyed jack shaft with 3 quarter inch flange bearing on the other end. The motor is a series wound DC rated at about maximum 6 horsepower. It came from an old small industrial electric vehicle and the motor mounting bracket is from a Taylor Dunn belt drive electric vehicle. The transmission mounting bracket is made out of one quarter inch steel plate. And in the middle of the mounting bracket is a gusset and tube that houses a carriage bolt that will be used to set the belt tension. Before clamping this all together and welding it up, I need to determine the center to center of the pulleys and what size drive belt to use. Looking at Gates belts, it looks like the smallest belt they have is 21 and a half inches. Now I need to calculate the distance needed between the two pulleys. Breaking this down in a spreadsheet may make it easier to understand. In column B in the top left, I have my variables being the diameter of the two pulleys and the selected belt length. Now going across row number 7 is the radius for the pulleys number 1 and number 2, and next to that is the circumference for each pulley being 2 pi times the radius. Since the two pulleys are very close to the same diameter, it makes this easy because the belt will only be going around one half of each pulley, and that is shown in columns F and G. Adding columns F and G together, then subtracting one half the belt lengths gives us the center to center distance for the pulleys shown in column I. Now we need to move this formula into Inventor so it can correctly model the belt, but first the formula must be simplified. Combining rows B7 through H7, we get this formula. First hack at simplifying the formula gives us this, and then one more time giving us something that we can put into Inventor. Now we'll jump over into Inventor and set up the parameters. In the parameters of each pulley, I renamed the parameter and shared it for export. Opening one of the pulleys and looking at the parameters, you can see where I renamed the parameter DIA P1 and ticked the box over the export parameter column. The other pulley is named DIA P2. Note, 
These are case sensitive. Now let's get the belt opened and get it set up. I already have user parameters for the two pulleys and know the pulley spacing and need to link to the shared dimensions of the pulleys, then add the belt length so Inventor will set the correct spacing for me. First, to simply add the belt length as a user parameter. Now tick the link button, open the model of the pulley, and select the shared dimension. Then do the same thing for the other pulley. Now let's add the formula to tell us what the pulley spacing should be. Referencing the Excel formula and changing the variables to match the parameters and inventor syntax gives us this formula to enter into the parameter named Center to Center. Now the belt model will update itself depending on what pulleys I use and the motor position in the assembly will be determined by the belt. Here I use the measure tool to confirm the distance matches the spreadsheet. And now it is time to start putting things together. 